again and welcome back to my workshop. Um, I've uh, finished baking for a little while um, although I've got some more orders for sourdough bread next week but I needed to get back to some of these jobs. Remember my earlier video where I showed you four or five things I had to um, to look at um, and one was obviously the Philco radio which is here I haven't looked at it yet must start on that this week uh, the other one was the Grundy uh, tape recorder portable tape recorder I haven't looked at that yet I have sorted out the um, the Sony uh, radio um, that was uh, well, anyway, um, <laughs> that was a bit of a misleading job because uh, the, the, the complaint was that it would only work on earphones and not work on the speaker. And um, it's one of those situations where you think, yes, I know what it is. It's the uh, earphone socket, which is uh, faulty. So I went along and removed that and <laughs> or checked it. It was absolutely fine. Um, and when I checked the speaker, the speaker was open circuit or extremely high resistance so I had to uh, procure another speaker very difficult to get a speaker um, that actually fitted that one this was uh, a one watt um, uh, four ohm speaker and it was not all that easy to get in the end I took one out of an old piece of equipment that I had and was no longer using so that's all now working so that can be ready to go I did look at the um, the pure uh, uh, digital radio and I uh, found the fault with it but it's not worth repairing it it's the digital volume control which has failed um, and they're they're going to cost like 15 pounds and you can buy one of those probably for about 25 pounds so not worth doing that one which brings me to this which is the um, the Philips uh, cassette recorder player and it's Philips EL3302 um, and uh, the problem with it was there's no sound out of it uh, at all now initially I did some voltage checks and the voltages seemed to all be there okay the motor goes the tape plays but even when I inject a signal right into the volume control there's still nothing out the speaker so this time I checked the speaker well that's not the speaker that goes with it because that's in the case this is my test speaker and that was absolutely okay um, which brings me now uh, after the voltage checks to back to basics which is simple continuity testing um, the circuit diagram uh, by the way the one in the book wasn't the correct one but I've downloaded um, uh, another circuit diagram and a schematic um, and uh, on this one it does show the speaker but right up the second right up the center of the uh, machine you can't see it there I'll show it to you in a bit by photograph um, there's a long slider switch um, which actually uh, is controlled when you push the um, the top one here uh, for recording or playback and uh, um, if that would was faulty in any way then then you wouldn't get anything out the thing that's bothering me slightly is that I've got a, uh, a little amplifier here which I sometimes use to put into various AF points to see if there's any audio coming and I still can't get any audio from the tape there's something serious going on um, it's not absolutely straightforward so I'm going to uh, have to investigate it a little bit further but I'm going to do that by doing various continuity checks from the the, the long switch um, through to the speaker and the AF stage um, but uh, this one is worrying me slightly um, it's not quite as straightforward as I thought it was going to be so bear with me while I do some more in-depth investigation okay um, back again with this uh, had a, a little bit of a, a delay just now because I was doing some voltage checks on the on the transistors and uh, realized that even the ground line was measuring six and a half volts so um, quickly realized that it needed grounding when you take the screw out that holds the PCB onto the base you actually isolate it from ground so everything was floating at about six volts put this lead in that's all working right um, my little uh, amplifier here which I'm using now has some results so if I go on to the volume control so 
I'm actually getting some sound. Um, it's very strange that all this is working, but if I, if I go beyond it, there's absolutely nothing um, on the base of the uh, uh, on the base of the output transistors um, at all. So um, let's go there. Nothing. Nothing. Oh. Okay. So uh, there is stuff coming from the heads. There is stuff going as far as the volume control. Um, after that, I need to do some more tracing uh, because um, there doesn't seem to be anything at all beyond it coming out of anywhere else. Certainly nothing from the speaker. So there's there's obviously a fault here. Um, either a transistor that's gone or um, uh, an open circuit on the PCB. That's it for this afternoon. Um, I'm not going to do any more. I'm turning all this off. It's quite late on a Sunday afternoon now and you know how you can get carried away with these things. Uh, but I'm a bit happier that I've made some progress um, and that uh, there is a signal getting through. What's happening at the end of the uh, device I have yet to find out. So that's a job probably for tomorrow. Thank you for watching so far and uh, I'll be back again tomorrow. Okay we're back to the, um, the Philips and uh, after an awful lot of prodding and moving around um, I found a dry joint uh, on the PCB. Um, I'll point it out to you in a minute on the circuit diagram but uh, it um, suddenly sprang into life when I was playing around with the uh, with the PCB on this side of it. But now it all seems to be working actually fine. I can't turn it up because of copyright reasons. Um, but I'm quite pleased with that. It's all working quite well now. Quite a bit of reassembly to do. Um, one of the things you have to be careful of on this one is when you detach the PCB you isolate it from, from ground, as I said earlier. But um, anyway, there we go. It's now working and uh, needs to be uh, reassembled. So that's uh, another job down. Um, this one took me quite a bit of time. It was quite fiddly. Um, and uh, the, the density of, of the components on that little PCB is extremely high. And, and they're all um, mounted vertically to, to get the to get them all in, but the PCP panel itself um, is uh, very, very tiny. Anyway, um, we seem to be there now, we seem to be working, um, so I'm very pleased with that. Well, there's a circuit, part of the circuit diagram of the beast, and uh, I eventually trace the problem to um, an open circuit or dry joint between R27, uh, this resistor here which comes from the base uh, of, uh, the, of T4 to ground and um, it was a vertically mounted uh, resistor. The problem was that um, as it went through the PCB there was the hole in the PCB and the, uh, the end of the resistor but they weren't quite touching each other so once that was resoldered the whole thing burst back into life. Um, so that was the, the problem um, solved and I was quite pleased about that because uh, this is one of those little jobs that you think is going to be fairly straightforward and it was beginning to drive me mad, taking up far too much time. So there's the PCB itself, um, quite difficult to point out here but um, you can probably see um, the, the, uh, the joint here um, which was uh, on the base of where is it? It's gone down. Here it is. There on the base of that transistor, and um, the uh, a little bit of resoldering sorted the problem out. So I'm um, quite happy about that. Now have to reassemble it um, and uh, put it uh, put it uh, all back together and make sure it still works. The, the problem with these things is it's 
<laughs> I don't know about you, but with me, um, I get them all back in the case after a lot of fiddling and uh, turn it on and it's absolutely dead. But there we go. Um, that was done thanks to my uh, my little amplifier I built, which is this little job job here. Um, turn the light out of the way. Uh, I just made a, a little um, audio amplifier and uh, an isolated input to it, and also um, an input via via a diode um, for radio work. So that one worked quite well, and a uh, little speaker in there. And it's quite good for tracing audio. And also, of course, um, my trusted signal generator, which is uh, the one I bought off eBay um, a long time ago, a few years ago now, which was the um, this little thing here. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's very simple, uh, nothing complicated about it, but it's an amazing um, fault-finding tool. And between the two of those, um, and uh, a little bit of perseverance and I managed to get the job done. So now let's get it back together. Well, here we are. It's all working and um, I've got to be very careful of copyright but uh, yeah the thing is is working fine. A little bit difficult to um, to, to, to operate it with the uh, with a case off, um, nothing to really lean on. But um, with this machine, the earthing is important. There is one screw here, which is the main um, ground from the PCB to the chassis. And again, um, when I first put it back, that didn't work properly because it needed cleaning up. So it's very important to make sure that all that is working. And I've actually put in my, my, my loop cable here as well. But there we go. quite good volume from it and uh, that's it really so I'm just going to try and disconnect the tape there we go um, I'm powering it from its own little uh, power supply but I will um, test it with batteries a little bit later on so that is it the the Philips um, cassette recorder EL3302 um, and uh, it's <laughs> a nice machine and uh, all the pieces are with it so um, got to get all this back together and uh, put it all back give it a well, I don't need a clean up because it's in more or less perfect condition um, why that dry joint happened don't really know uh, but there we go it's now sorted um, one thing a little bit of warning with this machine with these machines the, the Philips machines there are lots of versions of them um, I've got at least two different PCB um, versions here uh, and they're all slightly different um, I think uh, there's about four different uh, four different variants of, of, of the actual um, circuit itself but anyway all done all working and my next job, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one, is going to be the Philco uh, uh, radio. So I'm going to be um, working on that next for my next video. Thank you for watching this um, and uh, hopefully um, I'll be back with you soon uh, working on, on, on the Philco. Thank you for watching and as always, take care. Now it's really cold out here, I've got a little heater but I'm going, going to go in and uh, get a hot cup of coffee and um, maybe a chocolate biscuit now, so um, or a piece of my cake. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, take care.